Hello, my name is Paul Norton. I have the privilege of serving as superintendent of schools for Lake Travis Independent School District. Today, I'd like to take you through some information about our upcoming bond election and take you through the presentation that we have presented throughout um, our community. First, what is a bond election? We work with a group called PASA, and what PASA does for us is they project the growth that's coming uh, in our community. They work with a lot of fast growth school districts. They also work with us and have for several years on projecting out so we know what's coming uh, in growth-wise in student enrollment uh, in Lake Travis. Typically in the past, they have done projections every other year. We've actually done two different projections with them in the last 18 months just to see the impact of COVID has had on our community and knowing that we were having this bond election uh, in the very near future and looking at high school enrollment, we wanted to have really up-to-date information from PASA on that. So they give us different growth models uh, in their projections. They give us a low growth model, a high growth model, and then a moderate growth model. As a district, we always use that moderate growth model because it gives us um, some leeway on either side of that projected growth. Uh, even using that moderate growth model, when you look at our enrollment numbers uh, between now and 2031, they're projecting an annual average growth of 3.35% uh, in Lake Travis ISD in student enrollment during that time period. Also, they help us address the growth that's coming in our district. It helps us know where that growth is occurring, where we can expect to see that growth, what neighborhoods, what part of our community. That way we can appropriately plan for campuses as we add those uh, in the future. And the only way that we can build new buildings and new campuses as a school district is through a bond election. So that is why we have a bond election before our community now, uh, so that we can have the funds, if it is successful, to build these buildings uh, for the students that we know are coming to our community. And so the PASA report uh, is connected to this presentation. This presentation, along with lots of other information, uh, is on our website. So you go to www.ltisdschools.org backslash bond. Or you can just go to the home page and at the very top there's a tab that says bond. In that tab you will have the PASA report, you'll have presentations that were made to our long range facility planning committee, also presentations from our technology department, uh, as well as presentations that were made to the school board uh, in May or in June as well as in August. So all that information is available and I encourage you to go to that uh, web page and look for that information. Part of the PASA projections shows a yearly growth model. And so this slide right here shows you where we plan to be and where they project us to be in the coming years. So you look at 2022, they're projecting we'll be close to 11,900 students during this school year. And you project all the way out to 2031, where we're looking at 15,769 students that would be enrolled in our schools uh, in Lake Travis ISD. So that is information that we need to have to project the growth for the future and to know where we will need uh, campuses uh, down the road. One thing that we asked PASA this time that we have not asked them to do in the past is to give us our build out enrollment number. Knowing that we're going to be having lots of conversation uh, about the second high school and what those numbers will look like down the road, we thought it was very important to get that build out number from PASA. Build out basically means you look at the properties in Lake Travis ISD that are available for growth and for home developments. Once those are all developed, what are they projecting that our student enrollment will be once all those land developments have been developed? So you can see from this slide that we're looking at 17,783 students approximately when we get to build out, but the most important number on this slide is the high school number. So we're looking at 5,532 secondary or high school students that we would have when we get to build out. That's vital information for our uh, long range facility planning committee to have so that they would know what we need to prepare for as we add on this second high school. So as I mentioned, we brought together a long range facilities planning committee. We had 57 uh, community members, parents uh, involved in this process, some staff members as well. Uh, the part of this that I am the most proud of is that we had six students from Lake Travis High School that were involved uh, on the facilities planning committee. They gave great input and great insight from a student perspective, which is desperately why we wanted them on the committee. We didn't want to go through this process and not have the student voice involved. So having the student in voice involved was very important uh, to us and to the committee because their input was very valuable uh, as we moved through the, the process. So the committee we met six times uh, following the, the last meeting, 
they made recommendations based on the vote that they took in the last meeting and they presented this information at our June school board meeting. So the recommendations that came from the Long Range Facility Planning Committee first is high school number two. Uh, high school number two is projected at $236 million. That is based on a enrollment, max enrollment at high school number two of 2,000 students. So looking at what we would need for a, a campus that would hold 2,000 students, this is the cost it would take uh, to build that high school. Looking at when that would happen, if this bond were to pass, if it were to, to be successful, high school number two, it would take us about two years to plan, design, and draw high school number two, and then it would take about two years to build that campus as well. So if the bond issue were to be successful and high school number two were to be built, then it would open approximately in the fall of 27. Uh, traditionally, when you open a high school, you have ninth and 10th graders that are inside that building. You don't wanna take students that would be seniors uh, and move them to a new campus for their senior year of high school. So opening with ninth and 10th graders in the fall of 27, and then that 10th grade class being our first junior class and then our first graduating class from high school number two. Elementary number eight and number nine were also on the recommendations from the committee. Uh, elementary number eight, we have property for that on Bee Creek Road. Uh, we have already been working on the design and the development of that property. So if the bond issue were to be successful, we would immediately start that process of building elementary number eight. It would open in the fall of 24. So two years from now, that campus would be open. We would have students on the campus uh, and we would that campus would be completed. Elementary number nine is projected to open in 2025. It could be 20, fall of 2026, depending on growth numbers, but we're anticipating that it would be in the fall of 25. We continue to look for property uh, for elementary number nine, um, but we definitely have an area uh, of our community that we're looking at uh, for that piece. Uh, Lake Travis High School additions and upgrades. Obviously, Lake Travis High School uh, is a uh, great campus. We want to continue to keep it in great working order for our students and for our staff. So having upgrades on that campus as well as additions that we need for the growth that is continuing to come to our community. The facility condition assessment projects. Uh, back in 2016, we had this assessment done uh, that, went, that goes through 2031. Part of that is replacing roofs, replacing HVAC, all the things that keep a facility in good working order. We don't ever want to get in the situation where we're in deferred maintenance. You get into deferred maintenance, that means you're not replacing things in a timely manner. That has a negative long-term effect on the building itself. We want to keep our campuses open and have a life expectancy as long as possible. We don't want to have to build replacement schools anytime soon. So it's very important that we use these facility condition assessment projects to ensure our campuses are in good working order and safe for our students and staff. Technology is also a big piece of this bond and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. And then land, we have $15 million in this proposal for land. As we grow as a district, we're gonna to continue to need to purchase property for future campuses. If this bond were to be successful, after this bond, what we would need as a district to get to that build out number would be two, possibly three elementary schools, depending on what our growth numbers end up actually being, and then one more middle school. So we'll need those elementary schools, one more middle school, and that's the extent of new facilities and new campuses that we would need in the district if this bond issue uh, is successful. So for a total package, it's $703 million for this bond proposal uh, that came from the recommendation of the committee and the school board approved these recommendations to go on the ballot in the August school board meeting. First question that we always ask is how does this impact me? Uh, as a community member, as a taxpayer in Lake Travis ISD, how does a bond of this size impact me and what taxes that I pay uh, into the school district? With this bond election, it doesn't matter if it passes or fail, there will be no tax rate increase for this bond election. The tax rate will not go up, it will stay the same. People ask, how is that possible? We've been very fortunate uh, in Lake Travis ISD. We've been able to refinance $257 million of our debt uh, over the last several years. Obviously, when COVID hit, we had a significant drop in interest rates. And like a lot of people in the community who refinanced their mortgages, we refinanced as much debt as we could at a lower interest rate. That allowed us to pay off about $123 million worth of debt early over the last seven, eight, nine years which allowed us to save our taxpayers $120 million worth of interest payments. 
So that allowed us to have some room in our INS side of our tax rate to take on this debt without having to increase the tax rate. So that's vitally important for our community to understand. The tax rate will not increase whether this bond issue fails or whether it passes. Now, your tax bill may change. Your tax rate is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to property tax. The other piece of the, proper, of the proposal is your property value. So if the tax rate stays the same, your property value goes up, then you are gonna pay more in property taxes. The opposite is it's the same in reverse. If your tax rate stays the same, your property value goes down, then you pay less in property taxes. And so you're, you may pay more in the future for in property taxes, but that would be based on the value of the property of your home. And so the tax rate will not change. Uh, it will not go up because of this. In fact, if you look at the tax rate uh, in Lake Travis ISD over the last several years, uh, starting back in 2013, our tax rate was at $1.4075. It has stayed, it stayed the same through 2018 at $1.4075. In 2019, there's some legislative changes that impact the compression of the tax rate. We were able to lower our tax rate, and since 2018, we have lowered our tax rate by 19.54 cents. So this year's tax rate is $1.2121. You compare that to the $1.4075 in 2018. And we've been able to drop our tax rate by 19.54 cents uh, over that time frame. Another thing that our school board uh, has been great uh, at approving at their level is a local optional homestead exemption. So the example that's on your screen, you have a $800,000 home. You take 20% right off the top. This is something that is approved by the school board. The maximum amount that the school board can exempt is 20%. So the school board has done all they can on the exemption limit for this local optional homestead exemption. So on an $800,000 home, that drops your property value, taxable value, by $160,000. The state has a $40,000 uh, homestead exemption. You take that off, so you're paying taxes on a $600,000 home as opposed to an $800,000 home. The bottom line, it saves our taxpayers on an $800,000 home, that exemption saves our taxpayers almost $2,000 a year in property taxes. For some people, that's a significant amount of money. For some people, it's not. But when you look across our district at how many rooftops are in Lake Travis ISD, that's a lot of money that stays in our community. Those dollars would not come to Lake Travis ISD anyway. Those dollars would go back to the state in Robin Hood. But those $2,000 on that home stays in our community to use in grocery stores, to use in restaurants, to use in all the entertainment centers that we have uh, in our community. So as a property wealthy school district, we're part of Robin Hood and we have to pay recapture every year. For example, last year we paid $45 million in recapture back to the state of Texas. This year we will pay almost $70 million back to the state of Texas in recapture. So all the additional dollars that are being paid in property taxes that people think come to the school district, they actually go back to the state uh, in recapture. So this $2,000 that the school board approves through this local optional homestead exemption on an $800,000 home is another way to keep those tax dollars in our community to use in our restaurants, et cetera, like we talked about a moment ago. So it's a very good thing for our school district that our school board uh, approves this for us every year. When you look at total tax rate, this is a conversation that comes up quite often. Uh, our tax rate in Lake Travis ISD is high. When you look at other school districts, um, we are on the high end. So I just wanted to look at some of that data and some of that information with you. So looking at the chart that's on the screen, you look at our tax rates. Lake Travis ISD right here is $1.2121. These are all the other school districts that surround us uh, here in Central Texas. All the school districts that are in red, those are fast growth school districts. You would expect a fast growth school district to have a higher tax rate because they're building additional facilities to accommodate student growth. The charts that are in black are not fast growth school districts. So you have Austin ISD, Eanes ISD. Eanes has been capped out uh, at build out for several years now. They are not adding additional campuses. Uh, you look at Round Rock and Dell Valley as well. But you take our tax rate and you uh, basically put in the optional uh, local homestead exemption the effective tax rate is $1.655. That puts us at the lowest tax rate of all the fast growth school districts in Central Texas. 
And that's possible because of our school board approving the local optional homestead exemption, which reduces our effective tax rate by just under 15 cents. So that's something that our school board has continued to do to try to keep our tax rate down here in Lake Travis ISD. So what is on the ballot? Does the ballot look any different than in years past? And if so, how is that? So yes, the ballot does look significantly different. The last bond election that we had was in 2017, and there has been significant changes to the ballot uh, since 2017. One thing that is the same is you're either going to vote for or against the propositions as they are on the ballot. There will be three propositions on this ballot. In the past, we've always had one proposition on the ballot. And so these are broken out based on laws that changed in the legislative session in 2019. So when you look at the things that have changed, uh, for each of these six bulleted items, if they are on the ballot, then they have to be pulled out into a separate proposition. So if you have stadium with seating that's greater than 1,000 and you're doing a new stadium or renovations, then that has to be a separate proposition. So you have created an athletics proposition by doing so. So we do have this uh, on our ballot. So we now have an athletics proposition. If you're building an auditorium or a swimming pool, we are not, but that's a separate proposition. A recreational facility other than a gym, a playground, or a play area. A gym is considered part of the campus because you need to have a gym for PE classes. Um, so having that with the playground and play area obviously is something that all of our elementary schools have. If you are building a performing arts facility, then that has to be a separate proposition as well. If you're doing teacher housing, that has to be a separate prep proposition. And then the last is probably the most confusing one, the technology piece. So technology other than school security or integral to the construction has to be a separate proposition. So what this means is that you could have a proposition to build a school and that proposition passes. A proposition for technology fails and you don't, you're not allowed to put technology or you don't have the funds to put technology into that facility. And so this takes into effect all the laptops, desktops, uh, servers, uh, switches, all the things that make our technology devices available to students and staff and also make them run on the back end. So that is the technology piece. So we do have technology uh, in this bond election. So we have three propositions. The other piece of the law that has changed since 2019 is this last sentence on this slide. This is a property tax increase. This is required by legislation to be at the end of each proposition. And so that is to make sure that our community and our taxpayers know that you are generating tax dollars through your tax rate to pay off this debt, whether it's the debt that's coming in the near future or the far future, depending on when you um, sell those bonds. So our tax rate is not increasing uh, with this bond election, but this is required to be on there so people understand that dollars that are generated with the, the tax rate down the road is paying off this debt. So looking at the three different propositions, we will talk about these further, uh, each proposition here in just a minute, but I just wanna highlight and make sure that you see at the end of each proposition, this sentence that says, this is a property tax increase. So for example, on your ballot, you'll have proposition A, you'll have this language, and then you'll have a box to vote for or against. Same thing with proposition B, which is our technology proposition. The very last line is this is a property tax increase, and then you'll have your box to vote for or against this proposition. And then proposition C is the athletics proposition. Again, the last sentence is this is a property tax increase. After that, you'll vote for or against this proposition. So in 2017, you had one proposition that you voted for or against. This time you will have three separate propositions to vote for or against, and that is because of the changes that were implemented in 2019. So Proposition A, what is on the ballot for Proposition A? This is all the buildings. Uh, so you look at the two elementary schools are listed here. High school number two is listed here. It's very important to realize, for example, that these numbers aren't the exact same numbers that you saw on the first slide with the recommendations, and that's required by law. So for example, high school number two, and we mentioned earlier, that's $236 million. The part of it that is the building construction is the 176 million that you see on this slide. Technology for high school number two is in proposition number two. The athletic facilities for high school number two is in proposition C. So you add all of those three numbers together, that's where you get the total amount 
for high school number two. Same with the elementary campuses, you have the technology piece that is in the next slide. So this slide highlights uh, how much uh, is dedicated to each campus and each department. Out of the bond issue, you can see the $15 million for uh, land and development is also uh, in this Proposition A. And so this is all the information that we have uh, regarding the proposals that are in Proposition A. Some of the specific items that are in Proposition A, you have the elementary shade structures. The elementary shade structures are really there for bad weather days. So on days that it's raining, it's bad weather. We've all seen the elementary campus where parents pull up and drop off one student at a time because that's where the awning in, very, very awning is, which is very understandable. This would allow us to, to develop that awning more along the front of the, the campus. It would be very appealing. It would not be a, a bad look or a bad design. It would uh, complement the campus as it is and allow us to drop off and pick up six to eight students at a time like we do on a normal day as opposed to just one on a time, one at a time with bad weather days. Special programs, required improvements, that's for our special ed program. Uh, so as we grow our special ed programs, as we add special ed programs in the district, this gives us funds to make sure that we're meeting ADA compliance uh, on these classroom setups and able to generate um, more space for our students as these programs go. District-wide door hardware replacement. Uh, some of our older campuses, they, the doors to the classrooms don't lock from the inside. Our teachers would have to go outside and lock the door if the door was not locked in an emergency situation. So this gives us the funds and the availability to make these classrooms as safe as possible uh, for our students and for our staff. Science classrooms, uh, we need to add six science classrooms to the high school. We need those for growth that's coming, but also we need those now as we're developing more science uh, in STEM classrooms for our students, we want to make sure that we have classroom space uh, to accommodate this growth uh, in students as well as growth in programs. And then meal work, that is a replacement of cabinetry throughout the district. So as the cabinetry in classrooms, et cetera, wears out, it gives us the ability to replace those cabinets with this meal work piece uh, in Proposition A. Also, we want to do some improvements and renovations to the Performing Arts Center at Lake Travis High School. Uh, we want to um, redo some architectural finishes and, and do some renovations, not only in the Performing Arts Center, also in the black box and also in the lobby. And we have a lot of events that occur in the pack, some even community events that, uh, that occur in the pack. We want to have this nice as possible for our community. It was built in 1999, the last set of renovations was done in 2006, so it's time to do a refresher on the pack and make it a great facility for our students and for our community. The new competition arena would be a new gym at Lake Travis High School. Uh, the gym that we have now was built uh, in the 1980s. Uh, it has been a great gym for us. Uh, it was built when we were a two-way high school and now we're a much bigger uh, district. We're a 6A district. We need a facility to accommodate the growth that we've seen and to accommodate the programs. Uh, just having a 2,500 seat arena at the high school for our volleyball, basketball programs, etc., would be a huge benefit to us and would also allow us to bring events into Lake Travis ISD so people could see the campuses and the facilities we have, but also to come to our community and eat at our restaurants and stay at our hotels to generate more dollars within our community. Another aspect of this bond issue that we're looking at is, a, is getting ready for the growth that's coming. Now, we know the growth is coming. We've seen the growth happen over the last several years. We see the projections. We want to be proactive and get on the front side of the growth. So part of that is adding on to the administration building, adding more offices. As we grow as a district, we're going to need more folks in our business office, in our HR office, et cetera. Getting ready for that and preparing for that is something that we definitely want to do in this bond election. Also, the EDC in front of Lake Travis Elementary, we want to be able to add on to that piece as well. Uh, we have office staff that is in portable buildings at the EDC. We want to have some training space for our staff in the EDC as well. So this would be a huge benefit as we grow as a district. The new maintenance and food and nutrition services building uh, is something that we desperately need as well. Our maintenance team is actually housed back behind Lake Travis High School. When the Lake Travis High School and Lake Travis Middle School were on that footprint, it made sense for the maintenance team to be there. Now, as we've grown as a community and as we've grown as a school district, we need to move that department off of the high school campus. Number one, there's a lot of times during the day that our maintenance team can't get in and out because of the traffic at Lake Travis High School. 
as we grow as a, a community and as we grow as a district, we want to get that department more centralized to where it's closer to all of our campuses. And so moving them over towards Bee Cave Middle School is something that we think would be very beneficial for the district long term. Same with our fans department. Having them have a great warehouse uh, and our maintenance team to have lots of space to be able to work on equipment and do the things that they need to do to help our facilities uh, in our campuses continue to look great. And the facility condition assessment, we've talked about that piece previously, but just making sure that we don't get into deferred maintenance and we keep our facilities in great working order uh, for our community. So Proposition B, Proposition B looks at the technology piece. So you look at high school number two, which is the third bullet on this slide, you can see it's almost $4 million for technology um, at high school number two. There's also dollars in there for elementary eight and elementary number nine. And then it lists out the different uh, facilities and campuses uh, in our district that would need technology upgrades. And so when you look at how we came to this piece, um, our technology department uh, did internal uh, audits uh, of where we are right now. They also looked at where we need to be in the future. We also contracted with True North Consulting. Uh, they do a lot of consulting in the realm of technology. They came in, worked with our technology team. They did lots of interviews, did lots of analysis. Um, they did uh, focus groups with different groups across the district. And then they worked together to come up with the final proposition proposal would be um, for our long range facility planning committee. And that was presented to them at the April 12th meeting. So a big piece of the technology is also obviously the life cycle. A lot of the technology doesn't last very long. Uh, it has a short lifespan compared to other parts of a district. When you look at laptops and desktops and monitors and servers, those things last five years. So a great example is Bee Cave Middle School. People talk about Bee Cave Middle School and that campus is a brand new campus. Why do we need to replace technology there? Well, this is the fourth year of Bee Cave Middle School. When you look at the life cycle of these devices, so many of them only last five years. So actually the technology, at a, an example, Bee Cave Middle School would need to be replaced twice in a five to seven year bond cycle, which is what this bond cycle would be. And so that is all embedded in this technology budget uh, for this bond election. And obviously you look at the other the security cameras, the, the document cameras, the LCD projectors, they're all projected to last seven years. And at the far end, the cabling is uh, 15 years. And so obviously we have those on a cycle to be replaced because we don't want our technology to go down and our, our students and our staff to suffer because we didn't plan well in the life cycle of these devices. And then proposition C is the athletics proposition. So for high school number two, it would be approximately $56 million for the athletic facilities at high school number two. Adding the football stadium, the track, concession stands, restrooms, parking lots, field house, locker rooms, weight rooms, baseball and softball fields, tennis courts, uh, all the things that go into an athletic facility for uh, a second high school is embedded in Proposition C. We also worked with our other secondary campuses to see what the needs are there uh, in the athletics realm. Hudson Bend Middle School, we need some additional space there for PE, et cetera, as that campus grows. Obviously, being our oldest middle school, we need some more space there compared to LTMS uh, and Bee Cave Middle School, where they already have uh, more space for their athletics uh, and PE programs. Lake Travis Middle School, the only thing that Lake Travis Middle School we need is turf replacement for the football stadium. Again, these are things that won't all happen year one. This is something that will happen over time when we will get as much life out of that turf as possible. But before it becomes unsafe for our student athletes, we would replace that turf to where they had a safe turf uh, facility to compete on. And then Lake Travis High School, uh, renovations and upgrades of our athletic program at Lake Travis High School. You have the baseball and softball turf installation. When you look at turf installation at a baseball and softball field um, versus maintaining the grass and the infields, et cetera, it's more cost effective to put in turf on the long term. Also, it's just the manpower that's needed to work on the baseball and the softball field. By removing that need, it allows us to have our maintenance team on our campuses doing work orders, et cetera, instead of getting a baseball and a softball field ready for competition uh, on a weekly basis. Baseball concession stand and press box, we're replacing those. Stadium renovations uh, at the at Cavalier Stadium, additional seating. Uh, also women's field house addition, uh, renovating restrooms on all of our athletic fields. Men's field house addition uh, as well. Outdoor golf hitting bays. Uh, this is very important to the continued growth of our golf program here in Lake Travis. We wanna make sure that we have a great facility for our kids to compete in. 
We work very closely with the area golf courses to have space for our kids to practice, but that's becoming more and more difficult. And there may come a day to where we don't have a facility for our golf team to compete. So having this at the high school would be very beneficial to our golf program, having the hitting bays, the putting green to where they at least have somewhere to go on a daily basis uh, to get better and prepare for the upcoming seasons. Also replacing lighting uh, at all of our uh, athletic and sports fields uh, and then fencing at the track stadium that needs to be replaced as well as the seating at the track stadium. So just highlighting a couple of pieces of Proposition C, baseball concession stand. The baseball concession stand was built in the 1980s. When it was built, we were a 2A high school. That concession stand has lasted 35 plus years, which is great. Uh, it's just time for a new one. And so hopefully we build a new concession stand with a seating area next to it, as well as a press box uh, above it. That is something that would last our community for 40 years. Uh, we're not a two-way high school anymore. We need a bigger concession stand. We need a bigger press box. And this would allow us to provide that for our baseball program. And then the women's field house edition, new 12,500 square foot, two-story edition, uh, just to accommodate the growth that we've seen in our girls athletic programs as well as the PE program um, at Lake Travis High School. This is something that we need uh, for the growth uh, of those programs at Lake Travis. Safety and security projects, obviously safety and security is the top of everyone's mind now, especially considering what happened in Uvalde at the end of the last school year. This is not a separate proposition. All these things are embedded in, the, in Proposition A, B, and C, but we wanted to make sure that we listed what those pieces are for our community. So looking at a lot of the technology that is implemented, the security cameras, the secure entry spots, we need, still need to upgrade some of the secure entry points at some of our campuses to make sure it's safe for people to come in and be a part of our campus, but also to keep our students and staff safe through that process. The door replacements we talked about earlier, also parking lots, crosswalks, things of that nature, we definitely need to uh, keep it forefront of our mind to keep our campuses as safe as possible moving forward. So safety and security uh, consists of about $97 million of this bond package. And so we definitely wanted to highlight those um, for you today. Another important piece is just what it costs to build new campuses. We've all seen the impact of inflation on us personally, whether it's in the grocery store or wherever else. It's the same thing in the world of construction. We've all seen construction of housing. Uh, the cost continues to go up. It's the same in school districts. So Rough Hollow Elementary, for example, uh, was part of the 2017 bond. It opened in the fall of 2020. That campus cost $33 million to build. You look at the next two elementary schools that are in this bond package, elementaries number eight and number nine. Using the exact same footprint, which is what we have, the district has decided to do, this footprint for Rough Hollow Elementary is the same as West Cypress Hills. We've, we use the same footprint as we've worked on elementary number eight, the design work for it. We've had to adjust it a little bit just for, for the topography of the property that it would be on but it's very much the same footprint. Just the increase in cost to build these campuses. You can see the cost went from $33 million with Rough Hollow Elementary to between 50 and $55 million for elementary schools number eight and number nine. Just that increase in cost is obviously very significant and something that we want to be aware of as a community and as a school district. And then you look at the bond history for Lake Travis ISD. Over the last 20 years, this is the list of bond elections that we've had as a school district. You look back to 2017, it was $253 million. This year in 2022, it's $703 million. That's a significant increase. But also, you, we all need to realize this is a bond election like we have never seen in Lake Travis ISD. This bond election has the second high school on it. We've talked about the second high school in our community for many, many years. This is actually addressing that and putting it on the ballot for our community to consider. Also having two elementary schools, that's a significant cost, especially when you see the cost of inflation in construction and also the other properties getting us ready for the growth that we know is coming. And so we know this is a significant jump in the cost, but when you look at our build out numbers, you look at the future bond issues for Lake Travis ISD, what we will need, if this bond issue were to be successful, what we would need as a school district to get to that build out would be two, maybe three more elementary schools, depending on what that true growth number is at the elementary level, and then one more middle school. 
Obviously, we're not going to need another high school if we build high school number two. Two additional uh, elementary schools, maybe three after this election, if, if these were to pass, would be all we would need for elementary schools and then one more middle school. So the $15 million in, in land purchases, is that's embedded to get the properties for those uh, elementary schools and potentially that middle school down the road. So lots of important information here. Early voting begins on October 24th and runs through November 4th. And then election day is Tuesday, November 8th. As I mentioned earlier, there's lots of information on our website. So where you can find more information is you go to ltisdschools.org backslash bond. There's lots of information. This presentation is on there. There's also a FAQ. So a lot of frequently asked questions that we have received as we've gone and done presentations in the community and throughout the district. We've answered in that FAQ, so please go through, read that FAQ, see if there's some, some things that uh, are of interest to you that you would want to consider. If there's other questions that you may have, please, please, please email at info at ltisdschools.org. There are several of us checking that email account. Please feel free to send in any questions that you have about the bond election to that email address, and we will definitely get you answers um, to your questions. So again, all this information is at ltisdschools.org backslash bond. Please feel free to peruse that information. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.